Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan with our first kind of overview, preview, review, whatever you want to call it, video back after my illness. Now, if you can hear me talking slightly weirdly, I am still uh, recovering. I've still got a big kind of like swelling and everything on the side of my mouth, so I do apologise. I will try my best for you though, but today we're going to be taking a look at the new Kingston HyperX limited edition Navi products. Now, uh, th th there's two things. We've got the solid state drive here, which they do in a 120 gigabyte and a 240 gigabyte size. And you're looking at uh, 555 uh, megabits a second for sequential reads and about 510 megasecond for sequential writes. This is based on the uh, HyperX 3K SD, which was the one that they did. They did a blue one, but then they did a, a dark grey one after. And essentially, that's what this is based on. It's the same drive inside. It's just that it's got slightly different. You know, they've gone with the navy black and yellow colouring. Now, what we've also got here is uh, one of the memory kits. Now, they do a two times four gigabyte memory kit and a two times eight gigabyte memory kit. So you get the option of eight and 16 total size dual, um, uh, dual channel kits. So obviously that's fine for your ivory and your Sandy Bridge and your, your Haswell. And if you wanted to run them in a 2011 based rig, which is quad channel, you could obviously just buy a second kit should you want. But obviously if you wanted more memory in your dual channel kits, you can run two kits side by side anyway. Now, these kits are 999.24, they're 1.5 volts and they're 1600 megahertz. Uh, and that's it, they're, they're, they're only doing um, those uh, they're only doing those speeds and sizes, so it's a, a relatively limited. We've essentially got 120 gigabyte and 240 gigabyte options on this, and then we've got uh, an 8 gigabyte kit and a 16 gigabyte kit available on these. So there's only uh, you know two kind of SKUs or SKUs, whatever you want to call it, for each one, um, and they come looking like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop the uh, the uh, camera quickly. Get these packages open and then I'll give you a quick look. But something else that we're also going to do is because of the colouring on these, I think these are very well suited to a specific vendor's product line at the moment. So we'll have a good look at the products themselves and then I'm going to stick them uh, on in a motherboard, whatever, to show you how they look when they're teamed up with some other black and yellow products. Namely, the MSI uh, M Power Stroke Overclocking Range Lightning, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. Right then, first things first, solid state drive. It pretty much is, uh, well it is exactly the same as the um, uh, the grey one that they did. Apart from this would have been grey and you had like the bits around the outside were black. So they've literally just changed the colouring of the solid state drive to the black and yellow. It's quite a simple fix. Um, and I actually quite like the idea of this type of thing because it obviously, um, it, if you can colour code things within your rig, then it does make things a lot better. The, um, you know, especially with, you know, we do like our rigs to look nice nowadays, or at least those of you that, you know, follow me and stuff, then you know how anal that I get about, you know, liking things to match and colours to work and everything like that. It's obviously a really nice design with that textured HyperX logo on it. I'm trying to get it to kind of glisten in the light there, but, so it does work really well. The HyperX 3K SSD was quite popular back when they first released it because it was much cheaper than the Skype again popping off. It was much cheaper than the uh, the original blue um, HyperX solid state drive they did, but the, the read and write performance was really good. Uh, Kingston have always been uh, pretty strong up there with the, the solid state drive market. But if we move up along to the memory modules, now these are black and yellow and uh, quite positively because Kingston have made the change recently to black PCBs on the um, on the memory sticks. Now these are based on the 1600 megahertz Genesis models that they did. These were available in blue and also a grey previously. So underneath they're just Genesis, but with the Navi uh, uh, HyperX limited edition black and yellow heat sinks on the top. You can see that we've got perforations along the top. I'm assuming that this is kind of a way that the like the heat can disperse really. But memory doesn't really, you know, create that much heat. And uh, it's probably more along a styling sort of line to break up the mass of the yellow. The only time I've seen anything remotely yellow like this in the past was a um, the radioactive kit, actually, from Mushkin. 
uh, but they were a much kind of more gaudy, bright, uh, not fluorescent, but quite a, a, it was a pastel type of radioactive yellow. And uh, as far as yellow is concerned, I really do quite like the look uh, of these. And like I said, nice black PCB, black detailing on the, the memory sticks. It all works really well. But I think the, the strong point of these products are going to be when you team them up with the right motherboard and the right graphics card, which is the thing I really want to show you now because this is the main point about this video for me personally is just quite how well these products team up with the black and yellow MSI stuff. Right then peeps, so I'm showing you the MSI M Power Max, but they, they do have two other uh, models in the range. They do have the, just the normal M Power, and then I think they have a, I think M Power Extreme or something. But there are three different um, price points that they come in with these boards. I think it's around the 160, 170 pound mark, 225, and then up near the 300 pound mark for the you know the top flagship one. And uh, this little bit lights up, and it's all predominantly a black board. The audio boost does light up yellow, but then you've got these little flashes of yellow on the heat sinks. Now, as you can see, I've got the memory fitted in there now already. And although the coloring isn't a perfect match for, you know, for my eyes, because obviously with my uh, body shop and engineering background colors, I pick up on quite strongly. Um, you can see that it does really, really tailor in with the, the, the theme of the board very well. Um, obviously when you put the solid state drive in as well you could have that at some other point in the rig to put a bit of extra flash of colour in there. Um, but uh, sadly I've not got a lightning card here at the moment. I did have a 770 um, so you can purchase those at the moment which is obviously based on the old uh, 680 lightning uh, but I can um, confirm that there is a 780 lightning due uh, imminently. Um, now to talk about the products as a whole, obviously the solid state drive for a performance rig is going to be uh, paramount. I can't really use, um, let me just tweak the camera a little bit, I can't really use uh, mechanical drives anymore. Uh, I think, you know, for the price of solid state drives now, it's, it's a no brainer to, to run one. So if you're going to be doing a black and red rig, I kind of think that, oh sorry, black and red. A black and yellow rig I do kind of think that the this would almost be a no-brainer um, something with the memory that I do find kind of confusing really um, now it's only available in 1600 megahertz guys um, now I say confusing but it's not their fault they've gone with the the kind of mainstream one the ones that they know they're going to sell the most of and that's all well and good but when you're running uh, a board like the M power then um, uh, this board is designed for overclocking and I personally that if I was going to be running this board I'd want probably want some quicker memory, but it really depends whether The color is going to be the most important thing for you or the memory speed There are other black and yellow options out there But I would hasten to say that one of the other brands that does have uh, a, a yellow memory stick um, They light it up blue and it really does spoil it and all of the kind of bumblebee themed rigs that people just generally kind of do just choose that memory just because it's black and yellow I think those blue LEDs really spoil it and it it's just something that doesn't optically work for me so if you're looking to build a black and red rig for aesthetics so for argument's sake like I said you might be doing a, a bumblebee themed build or something like that I think this combo is pretty much a no-brainer especially if you were then to drop that 770 lightning in uh, because of the black and yellow aspects on it as well, you've kind of then got your, your whole kind of um, the themes of your rig mi uh, mapped out for you. And I would almost go and say then that beyond that point, uh, I would go with pretty much everything else black. Some white LEDs, because the white LEDs will pick out the yellow. If you just use yellow LEDs, it will all bleach and it won't, it won't look anywhere near as good. But if you run white LEDs, it'll pick these little highlights out and it'll look amazing. Um, and then you keep the rest of the rig stealth, maybe with the odd, very rare splash of yellow on the rig somewhere, but keep it very minimal. And by keeping it minimal and having the rest black, you'll have an amazing contrast with the black and the tiny little bits of yellow. And it will just make everything in there pop a lot more. Um, and that's really why I wanted to make this video, is because 
it's not very often you get a kind of a range of products like this that will fit together so amazingly well. And like I said, it's just a shame that I've not got my 780 Lightning here yet because I know I am getting sent one direct from MSI HQ. But if, it, if I'd had it here or it was going to be here within the next week, I probably would have stalled this video. But where I know it's not, I wanted to get this done just so I could share with you. Um, so this isn't uh, like a review as such because to be fair, we've reviewed the HyperX 3K SSD in the past. It's going to perform the same. You may get slightly better performance if we were to test it on Haswell, but we would test it on the same rig as we did before so that the results were comparable. Um, but also, really, with the 1600 megahertz memory, 1600 megahertz memory for a custom build is what I denote as being entry level. This is what I consider as being you start at 1600. I don't even see 1333 as being anything more than kind of the type of stuff that you go and buy from Walmart or PC World or something like that. Um, so it's a good entry level kit. It's gonna, it's blatantly gonna be well priced because of it. I remember when the the, the solid state drive come out, it was below the hundred pound mark. So I'm kind of assuming that you know both of these products are going to be very well priced. Um, there's no confirmation yet because I've not been able to find a retailer that's stocking them yet. There's very limited information about them around at the moment anyway. Uh, but like I said, if you're thinking about a black and yellow rig, I personally think that as long as you're okay with 1600 megahertz memory, that this is just a match made in heaven. And I know there are a lot of people out there that have been looking at the, um, the uh, MSI overclocking boards to have a little bit of fun with but really because they want to do that black and yellow theme and I think this if you can afford to stretch to a lightning card as well that matches the black and yellow theme to be fair I don't really think you, you have a lot more that you uh, need to do cooling is obviously going to be something that you're going to need to contend with um, uh, you can make the LEDs on a H100i go yellow should you wish um, I'm, I'm not even sure whether I would have them on or not, to be fair, but you know, something that's going to be very minimal in this socket would be paramount. You don't want a massive air heat sink on it because it's going to start to cover stuff up. But an all-in-one water cooler in the middle with just the hoses coming off will keep all this area nice and open and be able to see the, the yellow kind of flashes. And if you were, if you were, to do uh, use the Corsair SP series fans, which I've not got one loose to hand, but I do have the um, rings. Now these rings come off the fans and they clip off very easily. So if you wanted, the other bit of colouring that I said that you could do in your rig, you could pop these rings off of the fans. You obviously need to get some scotch bright and sand them a bit. scotch bright is like the type of kitchen scourer type of stuff that you use, but it's perfect for prepping plastic. Um, so scotch bright it all off. Plastic primer, you need to remember specific plastic primer, and then you could um, spray these rings yellow as well. And if you then had, you know, tiny little yellow aspects on your case fans uh, and then kept everything else in there that you possibly could do black, so you know, you know, don't go putting any LED fans or anything like that in there, keeping everything else minimal, I think you would be on to an absolute winner. Um, so let me know what you think. If you do end up buying these and building a rig, please remember to go and post on the Overclock 3D forums in the project log section. You need to be keeping an eye on that because there's plenty of stuff coming in that area of the site in the not too distant future. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another hopefully helpful and inspiring video for you. Out. Oh, I forgot it. <laughs>